Start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have our own Cal Evans and he's going to talk about RFCs from the future. Please make sure you visit Join In after the talk and leave Cal some feedback. Thank you, Joe. Yes, welcome to the latest installment in RFCs of the future. This one's called TikTok. Let's talk about signaling PHP. And you know, I wrote a book by that name and absolutely forgot to put that in my slide deck. So what we're going to talk about, asynchronous signal handling in PHP without ticks. Okay, this um, RFC is in version 9. It was um, voted on and accepted on the 6th of um, what, June there, uh, 2016. It is by my um, co-worker, Dimitri Stoffoff. Let's hear it for Dimitri. Thank you, Dimitri, for everything you do for PHP. And it is accepted. You can see it at that URL that is right there. Um, if you've never done signaling handling in PHP, um, actually, if you don't do a lot of command line work, then this probably isn't going to make that much difference to you because uh, the purpose of signaling handling is to be able to signal command line processes and make them do other things. Now, there was a small problem, not problem, but there was a, something you had to, to worry about. Um, in pre-7.1, you had to put a declare statement at the top of your, or somewhere near the top of your code that said ticks equals and then an integer. Now, with ticks equals one, PHP would check every at every instruction and say, is there anything for me to do? And then if not, it would go to the next instruction and it would keep doing that. Well, you pay a penalty for that, a performance penalty. On the other hand, if you set ticks to a higher number, I've had it as high as um, 10 before, it will do 10 things before it um, checks to see. And if one of those things it's doing is asleep, or two or three of those things are sleeps, then it's going to be a while before you um, actually get your, um, your, your signal handled. Now in 7.1 and going forward, we have a new um, command, PNC PCNTL async signals, and you can set it to on or off. Okay, now there's also an INI setting, but I don't like the INI file, so I chose to do it this way. And you set that on. Because of changes that were made to the Zend engine, PHP now automatically checks for signals at every tick anyhow. So we don't have to tell it that. And because it's an engine level change, we don't pay a um, performance hit for that. So um, the Zend engine in uh, 7.1 was extended with the ability to save timeout and interrupt and do interrupt handling. Um, you can see this is just a quote straight from the um, RFC. The translation is the declares ticks is now unnecessary. So what we've got is our, our code looks like this. We have um, somewhere in our code, we turn signaling on and then we set our signals. In this case, I'm handling um, sig or user one, user two, and term. I'm catching those signals. I'll ignore any other signals that come, like sig hub will not um, be handled. But on those three, I'm saying if one of those comes in, run the appropriate function. I've got a demo app for you. I've even put it up on um, uh, GitHub so that uh, you can see it actually. Um, I put it up on GitHub much to your amusement. But in this, this is a poorly implemented version of the infinite, infinite monkey theorem. The infinite monkey theorem is if you have an infinite number of monkeys typing for an infinite number of time on an infinite number of um, uh, typewriters, they will eventually uh, write the complete works of Shakespeare. Well. I'm going to change that just a little bit. We're not going to use Shakespeare. We're going to use um, Xanadu by Samuel Taylor Coldridge. No, not this Xanadu, sadly. Much to my family's great shame, this is my favorite movie of all times. I watch it, um, eh, I watch it two or three times a year. <laughs> That's probably something I didn't need to record. But um, no, it's not this one. But it is the poem that is quoted in this one where the movie is named from. Now, 
this demo app, like I said, it's poorly implement, uh, poor implementation of the infant monkey theorem. By the way, in November, Eric Mann will be our guest, and he will be showing you a very awesome implementation of the infinite monkey theorem. Um, this is a very simple algorithm. I load the poem up into a variable and then I just loop through it and I take the first character and I go into a loop and say is it this, is it this, is it this, is it this, and when it finds the first character it goes to the next character. It's basically just trying to to each of the letters. It serves no purpose. You will never ever use this code in production. That's not the point. Um, it does catch three signals, user one, user two, and um, terminate or term. Okay, and that causes it, user one causes it to tell us some basic statistics about what's going on. User two causes it to reset those statistics and term uh, causes it to cleanly terminate. Okay, now let me pop over to my code and I'm going to show you a little of this code before we actually run it. That's not what I wanted. Okay, um, I want to show this one. Okay, you should be seeing um, a sublime text window with sig test in it. Now, um, ignore all this. I'm just going to go over the stuff that's important to what we're doing. Notice here I've got my, I'm setting up my signals, okay? And then I, I've got the big loop and that just, that does all the work, okay? And then here I have a method called display status. Yeah, I know, I'm using procedural code and globals. This is not ever meant to be done. But all this does is um, as every time we go through the, um, every time we go through the poem, we count the number of guesses that we have to make to guess the po or to guess each letter um, right. And at the end of each run, we simply add those to a, an array, and that's a run, and then we loop back up for as long as the variable continue is true. So display status, all that does is just that. It'll, it'll go through and it'll tell us some basic um, status. If final equals false, and final will only be equal to true the last time we call it, um, if final equals defaults, it skips telling us the details of each run. It just gives us um, the grand total and an average number of guesses. Now, reset counter takes and just resets the runs um, array. That's all it does. And then it displays the status so that we know that it reset it. And then um, caught sig term, basically it just sets continue equal to false, which means our loop is going to exit at this point. Very simple code, okay? Uh, now we do have one other piece of code that we'll be using, and that is a simple little bash script that I use to send signals to that program running. And it just does a kill s for signal, um, and I pass it in a signal, and it finds the task that we're looking for, and finds the, um, ta the, the PID for that task, and it sends the signal to that task. And there's the poem, just in case you're curious. Okay, um, now I'm gonna have to share my entire screen. Um, main screen, okay. Get that out of the way, minimize that. Okay, what I've got here, I've got um, two windows. You should be able to see both windows. Now, um, I see your PSR2 jokes, Joe. Um, I've got two windows. Uh, these are both um, uh, uh, bash prompts in a Docker container that I'm running that has PHP 7.1 that I built this afternoon. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run that code, PHP SIG test, in this window. Now, this window is in the same, yep, we're in the right directory. Uh, it's, in, it's connected to the same Docker container. So I can use SynSig, and I can send it USR1, and it makes my program go and tell me the stats. Now, again, I didn't have to set the ticks. We've been able to do most of this in PHP already, but I didn't have to set the ticks. It is much more performant this way. Now, I can also send it a USR2 that resets everything just to show you, USR1, you know, okay? And then when I want to terminate it, I send a terminate, and it tells me uh, we've done 30 runs. 
It took a total of 5,800,000 guesses, and the average guess is 189, which is actually a little high. Um, it's been running about 182,000 182, um, for my tests. So that's what it can do. Now, I want to show you one thing. One of the things that we did not do, where is it? No. Nope. Wake up. One of the things we did not do is um, if I go over here and I do that again, and it's running, it's running, it's running, and let's send a USR1 just so we know it's running, everything looks good. Notice Control C doesn't give us the nice clean exit okay it just literally does what control c always does is um, just break out of the program the reason is control c sends a signal that we're not capturing control c sends a um, sig int or signal interrupt so let's do sig int and we're just gonna dump it back out to um, sig term and that will exit it properly. And now we're running, we're running, we're running. Let's send a one. Everything looks good. We've got 11 runs under our belt. Control C. And look, we got 21 runs, 4 million guesses, and um, it exited cleanly. Okay, let's swap back over to the slides. There we go. Okay. So to wrap this one up, now in 7.1 and beyond, we do not need to declare ticks, and it is much more performant because it's built into the engine. It's, uh, the engine handles it at the proper time. Um, the user doesn't need to. You still can if you want, okay? I told you there was an INI setting, or you could use that command, and where I put on, you could turn it off, and you know, it, 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 wouldn't, it would behave the old way, but you really don't want to do that. It is very easy to implement if you're implementing um, signal handling. And signal handling, if you're doing any kind of um, CLI script, especially long-running processes, my favorite thing to do with signal handling is to do what I did right here, which is implement USR1 as a give me a status of what's going on. But the other thing is um, I like to catch... Um, term and int so that I can um, do proper close or shutdown, close anything out, save any files I need to save before it just exits out. Because if you don't have signal handling and you've got files open or database transactions um, halfway through or anything like that, um, or files not written yet, uh, better example, you hit control C, boom, everything's lost. Okay, now you can control it. So it's very powerful. The source code is up there for your amusement, uh, github.com slash calevans slash tick talk. And I will put a link on the um, repo to my book, Signaling PHP, which doesn't talk about this yet, but I will update it very soon. And um, anybody who actually already owns a copy, you'll get a free update to include all the new 7.1 stuff. With that, I am done. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Let You Talk. If you'd like to give a Let You Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Cal some feedback.